We're surrounded by about 17 people selling this right now. If I buy one from one person, is it gonna be okay? Welcome to Madagascar. Over this six video series, we are diving into Malagasy cuisine and culture, starting in the nation's capital of Antananarivo. Here, the food can be served really quick. You say like, I wanna have zibuana. Plop, your food is ready. Then heading south through the island's vibrant highland. It's simple preparation, but it's awesome. And really, you appreciate it a lot more when you have this little piece. We'll hop aboard one of the country's few remaining trains, left over from the French occupation. It's a little bumpy, man. You gotta be careful when you're eating. Ending our adventure in Madagascar, Madagascar's coastal city of Manakara, where you'll witness village life never documented before. Shut up. It is like a felt material all around this crab. This vibrant island was first settled 1,000 years ago by Polynesians and East Africans. Outside metropolitan areas, traditional lifestyles in the countryside resembled that of centuries past. What's happening now? They're gonna cut it, but they uh, still need to find a way to all this well. Considering the lack of infrastructure, a guide here is an absolute must, and Joel is one of the best. The reason why they need this sausage is we can find it a bit up there. It's gonna be a surprise. Pasalamana. Pasalamana. That is the kind of rum that makes you go blind. Today, we're just a few miles from Antananarivo, checking out Madagascar's sprawling early morning markets. This is like a different world. Then heading to a nearby village where they're exclusively selling sausage and this, Madagascar's national snack. And you will never guess what's inside. I could even eat this rum. You ever just stand here with a spoon? So get your sausages in a row and pack up your chickens, because today we're taking on Madagascar. morning, just four miles from the capital, locals near and far wheel, walk, or push their produce, fresh meat, and anything else you could think to sell here. The morning market in Talatamati City. We've come to this little village very early in the morning. It's about 5 a.m. here. The streets are going wild already. People are bringing stuff. They're selling stuff. And they're buying stuff. Can you tell me what is the name of this market? The name of this market is this market gets cracking at 3 a.m. each day, continuing until 7 a.m. or whenever the police kick everyone out. Is there food we can eat here? Of course, because a lot of those sellers are like living 10 kilometer, 20 kilometer further from here, so they can only have something to eat here. So wow. there is a lot of ton of things that we can eat. So from here, we're just gonna check it out. Let's go. Hey, my man, do you do high vibes? Boom! Hey! <laughs> Oh. Excuse me, wow, what is she there? Pears. Look at all this bread. That guy has a crate of bread. Wow, this place is wild. So much action, so much going on. Hello. Okay. What do you got here, man? What are you buying? I just to buy an onion. Are you making soup? To prepare soup with it. Oh. It's okay for my gas people, huh? Is this your onion lady? The best onions are here? Yes, over here. It's very cheap. Okay. So Good tips. Guys, there. next time you're in this village, this is the onion lady to go to. Very cheap onions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Boom. <laughs> Can we get a ride on this? Better. Wait, really? He just told us to get on. Okay. Hey. <laughs> this is really the way to travel in town here. Thank you, sir. You're doing the Lord's work. They have geese and a flippin' turkey over here. Is turkey very common here? Yeah, especially now that we are going to celebrate uh, New Year's and mm. Christmas. There's still so much here. If they don't sell this, they need to pack up all these animals and bring them back home, right? Yeah, but I'm telling you, they will uh, sell those easily because Malagasy people, they prefer to buy all things alive. They want to make sure it's fresh, is fresh. that why? Yes. All this looking at food is making me hungry, but I'm in luck. Each morning, this woman wakes up insanely early, sets her charcoal ablaze, and begins the long process of preparing mass amounts of porridge for hungry vendors and locals alike. What time did you start here this morning? At 1. 1 a.m. Oh, man. Yeah. This is like a different world, the market life. Okay, so there's so much to choose from. Sausage, and then there's some rice porridge. And uh, some uh, dried meat as well. And what animal is this meat Zibu. From? All zibu. I really want to try this meat. It feels like kind of crispy and almost like dried out. Let's try it out. Yeah. 
Mmm. It's got that like spicy kind of nice gaminess. Machido, very yummy. Rice porridge is a common breakfast in this area. Spice it up with a bit of fried zebu meat and sausage, and this is the Malagasy breakfast of champions. What does she season this with? This is uh, mixed with uh, those uh, green leaves that uh, we saw on the market there, and a bit small ginger on it. But what is this red part? That's a special type of Malagasy rice. Oh, okay. Let's try it out. Mmm, really fatty broth. I mean, the flavor is just really meaty and oily, and it has that distinct zebu flavor, which reminds me of goat a little bit. I'm gonna put some spice in. Is this too much? You go with pizza color to go with. Yes, it's hot. I don't care about the rules, man. I'm going for it. Woo! That's spicy, but that is a good breakfast. Ma'am, your chili's waking me up more than coffee. We're going into this narrow enclave of the market that gets to stay here longer because they're not in the way of the main highway. And then here, we got everything. Is this? That's tobacco. Wait, that's tobacco? Yeah. So you put this in a cigarette or something? No, no, no. It's just like under your... Uh... Chewing tobacco? Yeah. Is this one nah, portion? people can have it like two times. Well, last time I had chewing tobacco, I was 15 years old and I went behind a tree and I threw up. So, not today, chewing tobacco. Bam, look at that. She's got like a giant mortar and pestle here. What is inside? Cassava leaves. Cassava leaves. She's making kind of a powder out of it. Yeah. Or like a fine puree almost. Yeah, this is the end product for it. Wow. Is this for seasoning food? People are mainly mixed with uh, peanuts or uh, cebu or uh, coconuts. To add flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Would she let me try a little pinch of it? It's a month. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. I mean, you can see it is very dense and kind of wet. It's just kind of beat to a pulp. Let's try it out. Fresh, earthy, and kind of that chlorophyll yeah. flavor. And a little bitter at the end, but I like it. Machido. Mm. Oh, she's so confident. I like that. I'm like, it's yummy. And she's like, yeah, no sh I know. <laughs> My man, we've yeah. just stumbled upon another food here. We call it the Chinese soup. So it's like those noodle soup that Chinese people are doing. Ah. But now we are doing it like in a Malagasy way. Ah. Yes. Where'd she go? Markets like this have their own underground economy that isn't so obvious on the surface. This lady, she's long established her territory in the market. But what if you're starting from the very beginning? Hi. What's in? What? What does that mean? How much do you want to have for a pasta? Oh, two bowls. Anja is a stateless entrepreneur, a new food vendor who's always on the move from police or other competitive sellers. This is the Zebu skin, and she said she cooked it this morning, so it should still be a bit fresh. This is her own creation. Pasta and macaroni with a mix of potato and mayonnaise, plus a Zebu skin add-on if you choose. Is it safe to eat, you think? We never know. I'm gonna start with just some noodle and some salad. <laughs> Mmm, yummy. It's super simple. It's just like kind of mayonnaise and salt and noodle. I like it. Sara. Sara. Good food. Yeah. You have a beautiful smile. By the way, this lady knows how to eat. Check out this shot from earlier. Yeah, that's her. Okay, this is what we're really waiting for here. Zebu skin. You can still see some little of the hair on mine. Uh, mine shaved. My Zebu was much more hygienic. Mmm, that's good. It's like pig skin. Just like a little gelatinous, a little gooey. Not gamey at all. Good flavor. What's next for Anja? Maybe she drops out of the street food game. Or maybe she sells enough Zebu skin pasta to one day afford her own lot in this crowded, chaotic maze of commerce here in Talatamati City. After the market, we head here. Two hours outside Antananarivo, this village. A place where knife-wielding men chase down cars and vans. Upon closer inspection, I notice these men are actually trying to sell something. And they call it Cuba. Yeah. 
Andre is his name. Andre, hello Andre. Yes. How's the Cuba selling going today? Yeah, it's a good business for him. Oh, that's yes. awesome to hear. Uh, how much is a slice? Like thousand or two thousand ariare. This village specializes in two things: sausage and Cuba. And since there's a ton of traffic coming through the center of town, it happens to be the perfect place to chase down hungry travelers and offer them some food. Here they have uh, two types of sausages because you know in Madagascar there is some Muslim people as well. Oh. So for example, you have like kibu and pork uh, sausages and there is like only potatoes on it. So that's halal. Yes. The meaty zebu pork sausage is more pricey than the potato sausage. In both, the main seasonings are salt and pepper, and the casing is made with zebu intestine. So we have both kinds here, and we'll kind of work our way up to the expensive one. First is the potato, and it's still warm. Ma'am, can I ask when were these cooked? Yeah, they are like fried it like uh, every time it's getting cold. It's like throwing it in the microwave for 10 seconds, right? Same kind of thing. Mmm. That is really good. No joke, like the fat from the intestine makes the potato juicy. It tastes hearty, it like has a meaty feeling to it. Let's try this one. A little pork, a little zebu. How much is it just for this much? This size, you can have it like for 500 ariari. Let's try it out. Oh, that's really good. A little salty, but there's nice meaty, super fatty flavor, like tons of fat. These sausages serve a greater purpose, and it's not to be eaten alone. Pasalamana. Pasalamana. That is the kind of rum that makes you go blind. My new friend Rodi lives just a few hundred meters from here, and this is what guys do while their wives are shopping. Grab some rum, grab some sausage, and wait to get yelled at. I gotta say, man, this sausage goes perfect with it because it is just fat and oily and salty and delicious. So during the wife and the kids uh, doing the shopping, the men are like staying in a bar like this. Mm. I just wish there was some version of this in the US because the most a guy can ask for in the US is to have a place to sit down and look at his phone. But here, this gives men a reason to look forward to shopping, really. Rodi is actually one of the Cuba suppliers for this area. Area, and he's offered to take us to his mini Cuba factory to see how this ubiquitous and strange looking food is made. Less than a mile away, this hillside collection of houses is licensed to produce Cuba. You can see that uh, sign behind. This is like a license? Yeah, just to make uh, everything official and uh, clear. So when you want to complain, like uh, your Cuba doesn't really taste nice, you can complain to the local government and they will give a fine to them. Whoa, I like that it's not just a random. There's some governing body around the Cuba <laughs> making here. That's amazing. This is the final product we're going for. Step one, layer the bottom with banana leaf spines, then stack banana leaves on top of that. So this one that they are making now, it's the type of Cuba that you carry around. So you need to make a really a thick leaves. So when you carry it, it it's not break up. easily. This classic Cuba has three main ingredients. Rice flour on the outside to prevent it from sticking to the banana leaf, then loads of crushed raw peanut and sugar mixed in the center. So this is a peanut with the sugar alone. Mmm, very nice. I could even eat this raw. You ever just stand here with a spoon? Then another layer of rice flour on top, more leaves, then tie it shut. Oh, it's really strong. You can tie it as hard as you can. Is that... Okay, he lost interest. <laughs> it's like my dad. And then you do kind of a slip knot, and then bam. That's the finished product. Finally, after you have a bunch of these Kuba logs, they're boiled in this huge drum for three days. Luckily, they have the finished version for us to taste now. I'm telling you guys, don't make a joke with that knife. Oh my God, that is very <laughs> sharp. That just went through it like a butter. All right, so the big reveal. Bam, there it is. You can see that little bit of rice flour on the edges actually expanded from the moisture inside when they cooked it. And then you see it just gets darker towards the inside. That looks incredible. I don't know you, but I want to taste. And where do you bite? I guess go right for the center, that's the best. All right, it's super sticky. Mmm. It's become like molasses, like almost a burnt kind of sugary flavor. I don't even taste much peanut. Do you taste the peanut? It's much more on the edge. It's like all the mm. sugar is going in the middle. Right. On the outside, it tastes like a little lighter. That first bite, like right in the middle, is the most intense. Can I have more? Yeah. <laughs> The reason why the local people like to eat it, because most of Malagasy people, we are walking a lot. When we are tired of walking, you can have some snacks. This is hearty food. I think two pieces of this, you feel full already. And we can walk for the next 10 kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, first of all, I want to thank you and your lovely wife. This is tremendous and so fun to try. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Second of all, where do you keep the booze? Can I just have a little drink? Me, you know, and the boys, we go all back. <laughs> 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 We 
are just getting started with our Madagascar food series. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for so much more. Joel, thank you so much for this amazing experience. I want to give a huge shout out to Ramar Tours for putting this whole itinerary together for us. We got to make the most of our time and see so many amazing things and have so many great experiences while we were here in Madagascar. Also for you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A peace. Adios, adios. All right, let's go eat again, or some, I don't know, which video is this after? Cut.